So now uh, I'm going to explain you how you can handle different exceptions which occur in Selenium, right? So first, let's see uh, what are the common exceptions which come will, which you will come across while working in Selenium, right? Um, while you are working on automation of web applications with Selenium, there are some exceptions which are uh, thrown by Selenium in different kind of scenarios, right? So these are some common ones, but there are lots of other exceptions as well. But let's have a look. So the first one is uh, pretty very um, common, right? Across every scenario or every application, you will at least find this exception once, right? So it's called no such element exception, and it occurs when the element could not be found by the Selenium web driver on the application, right? So it's pretty common to get this. Now, generally, you can resolve this by uh, changing your strategy of how you are identifying an element right so you can change the identifier instead of uh, id name class name you can use xpath you can use different uh, xpath access methods which we have already seen right or you can also use other xpath uh, methods to handle dynamic elements right so uh, there are different ways you can handle that exception uh, depending on your scenario okay the next one, which is also very pretty common, uh, stale element reference exception, right? So in applications, when the web element gets detached from the um, HTML DOM, this uh, exception is thrown, right? So even, the, even though the element is present on the page, you will not be able to interact with that element because it's already detached from the DOM. Now, the most common way of uh, resolving this is using the different kinds of weight strategies in selenium right so either you can use explicit weight or fluent weight and then you can um, reinitialize that particular web element right so that it gets attached to the dom after the javascript or any other script um, kind of finishes running you can again uh, reinitialize the element right so that it can web driver can interact with the web element right so this is how you resolve this exception now timeout exception, again, um, there is not enough time for a command to be completed. And uh, this is uh, this could be mostly resolved by, again, you can use different timeout options in Selenium, right? So wait for a particular action to be completed before you move on to your next statement in the script. So put some timeout, like you can use implicit wait, uh, page load timeout, uh, script timeout, there are many kinds of timeout, right? So you can use any of them. Now, web driver exception. So, this mostly occurs when the web driver um, is trying to perform an action after you have closed the browser, right? So, the um, browser is not present, or uh, the statements which you have written in your uh, automation is trying to, a web driver is trying to perform that action after the driver uh, browser is closed, right? So, just check whether if your browser is um, still open your driver is not closed right and you are trying to perform any state um, any action so that way uh, you can handle this exception element not visible exception so this happens when the element in the dom is kind of hidden right so even if it is present in the page it is not showing up due to some some property right which is kind of hidden so you can check for um, you can check using different Selenium methods, right? Whether the element is present or not, right, or visible or not, and you can wait for a particular amount of time until it becomes visible, right? So then after that, you can uh, perform some action on that element. So again, you can uh, make use of fluent wait, right, where you will wait till that element becomes visible on the page, right? Element not interactable um, exception now it's pretty similar uh, to previous ones uh, element is present in dom but it is impossible to interact with such element right so there could be a number of reasons um, one of the reasons could be element is placed uh, at the bottom of the page and you need to scroll down there in order to make it uh, interactable right so, or there could be other reasons as well, right? So you can use uh, JavaScript executor to scroll down to the page and then interact with that element, right? To resolve these kind of exceptions. Now, 
next is element click intercepted ex exception right so this generally happens when um, there is some other element which is trying to um, conceal the element which which was requested to be clicked right so you're not able to click on that element at that point because some other element is coming in between right so in this case either you can uh, wait for the page to lo get loaded properly right or you can perform some other actions around the element so that that element becomes um, available for you to perform any action right so there are different ways of um, handling these exceptions right but you should be aware uh, what exception is occurring uh, what is the reason of that particular exception how it can be resolved right so these are some of the common exceptions among uh, many other exceptions which are present in selenium now let's see how we can handle these exceptions right so selenium doesn't have any um, outright method to handle exceptions right uh, it then depends on the language which you are using the uh, the ways how you um, handle your exceptions in the language which you are writing your scripts right so for example if you're writing it in java you will use the try catch and finally blocks right or the throws statement to handle the exceptions in selenium how you handle it in java in the similar way you have to handle it in selenium also right so there is no um, different methods available in selenium you need to use the default ones uh, from your language which you are using for your uh, for your scripting right now let me show you a um, small example of how you can do that right so um, so this is uh, my this is my um, kind of project right which we have been using throughout and uh, we'll be using the same banking application demo right we will perform a small uh, kind of uh, scenario right so this is our page like um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a wrong identifier for this particular field and then I will also enter this password and click try to click on sign in right but uh, what will happen is it will not be able to identify this username field right so the script will stop there itself it will not go ahead so we will see how we can handle that exception so that our script moves forward right we don't want to stop um, at a place where some exception occurs like we want to continue our script to run so how we can do that so let's first see how we can get this exception right so i'm going to give a wrong id for the username field right so it's username but i will give a user right then i'll give something like send keys where i will enter the valid uh, value but obviously it won't work right so i'm going to enter the username now similarly i will do for the rest of the elements right so i will and this time i will enter the right identifier and the right value right so this is valid similarly i will also give a valid identifier for the button right so with that we can click on it now let's try and execute this and we'll see what happens right so in most probable case it will throw an exception that it is not able to find this element on the page because the um there is no uh, um property called id which has got a value user right so that's an incorrect id through which we are trying to find this username field and trying to enter this text right so selenium is going to throw a exception here but the important part here is our script is going to stop there because an exception has occurred now in um, when you are trying to develop any automation or for say you are doing some programming right ideal way is to you have if you know that uh, exception is going to occur right you sh your script should be capable of handling that exception right it should not uh, stop abruptly 
it should continue to run your application or your automation in, irrespective of an exception occurs or not right so that we can handle and we can see it in our results reports right so that um, if you have 100 test cases and if your exception occurs in the first test case uh, the remaining 99 will not run right so that's not an ideal scenario okay so uh, the first test case should fail but remaining 99 which are uh, passing should be executed right so that's the right way of doing it or you can say a best practice while you are automation you are doing automation for any application right so as you can see it has thrown in an exception no such element exception right so unable to locate element and it is given this uh, information to us so all good right we are able to see the exception now if we know that this exception is going to occur right so how we can handle this let's put a try catch block right so in the try block you will put the statements right which is performing in particular action and you know that there might there is a chance of you getting an exception here so there is a chance this element may not be present right so you can put that part in the try block and then in the catch block you can catch that particular exception right so no such element exception i want to catch this exception it if it occurs if it occurs i want to perform some action on this right so for this example i will just print out right i'll uh, print out a custom message but you can perform any action which you want to perform after getting an exception right so i will say this element is not present in the application right now you can uh, what you can do is you can also put these inside try block right and in finally now what i will do i am going to quit this driver so these are the three blocks which you can use to handle any exception right finally it's uh, not compulsory so if you are having a try block you need to uh, define a catch block but finally is not compulsory right so if you want you can define if you don't want uh, don't define it so finally what it happens is um, irrespective of um, an exception occurs and you are performing any action on the catch block the finally block is always going to execute so no matter what happens inside the script it is going to execute this it is not going to exit the program after you get an exception right so it's quite useful if you want to perform an action which is like a driver dot quit right i want to close the driver no matter what exception occurs in my script so in the those cases you can use finally right now I also want to show you, so let's define a method, right? So I want to show you how you can use throws in Selenium, right? So public static, uh, maybe get element, right? Um, okay, so here we will say void get element, right? And I'm going to put this here and i'm going to put web element this right now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to use a throw statement right and so um this way uh, but an exception has to occur so when when it will occur right you can use throws as a statement now in this statement um, it is not able to identify the I it's not able to guess that uh, there is an exception occurring like um, if you have something like uh, a file right file file equals to maybe new file right and uh, 
inside this i will give some path okay so which may be um, source uh, resources and files or file dot txt right now while maybe a reader right um, equals to new file reader and i'm going to pass this file here okay so now that um, i have written this method right and these are all valid statements but java is trying to tell us that there is a chance that there could be a file not found exception right so it's already detecting that um the file may not be present and it may throw this file not found exception so it's a, an, an un, unhandled exception so we should handle that in our code that's what java is telling us right then what suggestions it is telling us so we can either surround it with try catch block or we can add exception to the method signature right so what you can do you can add a throws method here which is file not found exception now similarly you can do it for element you can tell element not found exception and you can put the statements inside this so what will happen it is going to handle this exception right so this is another way of doing it and obviously you can do it with the try catch block right so um now let's execute this right uh in the previous scenario uh, we got an exception and the program stopped there but um, in this case it should not um stop stop there rather it will show me a custom error message not the um exception message right so that's a good way of handling exception you are throwing a user um custom user message right that okay this is the problem uh, which which happened the element was not found in the application that's why your test failed right so that's a valid way of um, handling an exception you are also throwing uh, logging it into your uh, um into your scripts right so you can easily track that failure but your execution is not going to stop right so that's the main um agenda of uh, doing this try catch block right so you should not uh, there should not be any abrupt uh, ending to your scripts and plus you are handling that exception in a more amicable way and not uh, throwing the default system messages right so that's what i wanted to show you in this section where um you can handle different exceptions selenium exceptions when they occur right so there are different ways as i explained you for all these exceptions so follow those while when you whenever you get any type of exception and then you can always use try catch finally block to um, handle your exceptions in a more better way in your scripts right